a 400% increase in anti-Semitic incidents. 12% of Americans told pollsters that Jews in this country have too much power. The rise in anti-Semitism. There's no question that anti-Semitism has been on the rise. Anti-Semitic attitudes show higher levels among young people. Reports from the ADL, FBI, and AJC all show sharp increases in reports of hate speech, vandalism, and violence. At least four people are believed to be held hostage right now, including a rabbi. Much of this hate stems from right-wing extremism. Endless anti-Semitic rhetoric echoes across internet forums, such as 8chan and Gab, which have been connected to shootings such as Pittsburgh's Tree of Life Synagogue and Poway, California's Chabad. As terrifying as these right-wing extremist acts are, it's not particularly surprising. White supremacists have been the source of anti-Semitism for generations. Jews will not replace us! What's new is that in progressive, liberal-leaning, and left-wing spaces, Jews are experiencing increasing hostility. So I often feel judged, or at least prejudged, uh, because of my Zionist identity and my Zionist beliefs uh, in progressive spaces that I often move in. With what Israel and Zionism stand for today, ethnic cleansing, apartheid, uh, uh, xenophobia, and racism. I often feel alone um, in my support for Israel, especially as a, a loud liberal. Zionism is racism! Zionism is violence! Anti-Zionism has created such a toxic, terrible environment for Jews. I felt as if I could not exercise the right to be a proud Jew. Even though this issue isn't inherently violent, in a lot of ways it's more insidious because it's normalizing leaving Jews out of social justice, progressive politics. Jewish people have been active in progressive, humanitarian, and liberal causes all over the world. So why is it that the far left is beginning to exclude Jews? And what does that mean for our Jewish identity? Yeah. We're rolling. Am I looking at in the camera? Yes. Or are you? Which, this, that way? Oh. Figure out how to word this right. <laughs> All right, let's do it. The International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance created a definition of anti-Semitism that has been accepted by 32 countries, including the United States, Canada, the UK, and the EU. It says that anti-Semitism is a certain perception of Jews, which may be expressed as hatred towards Jews. The IRA then lists several examples which typify that definition. When you're saying the whole country needs to be dismantled, that Zionism is in and of itself a racist endeavor and therefore illegitimate, the IRA definition says that is anti-Semitism. I think that a lot of people who are trying to be social justice activists use certain words when they're talking about Israel, like settler colonialists. The settler colonial state of Israel! And genocide. Israel, Israel, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide! And that Israel is an apartheid state. That kind of oppression, that kind of uh, apartheid, really, I've also heard Israel compared to Nazis. If you're against apartheid, if you're against genocide, if you're against settler colonialism, you need to be against Israel. I remember people asking either me or others that I knew, are you a Zionist? As if being a Zionist is something that is bad. Zionism is the belief that the Jewish people have the right to self-determination in our native homeland. Zionism is still perfectly compatible with Palestinian liberation and nationalism, and that there can be equality and balance between those two. Like this one girl just posted a, a map of Israel and said like, this should be Palestine. I swiped up and I was like, hey, um, can we talk about this? You know, I think that, that it's a little bit more nuanced and she, in short, basically said that um, Israelis are white supremacists, and uh, if I support Israel in any way, then I am a white supremacist as well. Anti-Zionism is anti-Semitic because 
Fundamentally, it is a worldview that says out of all nations and peoples, only one has no universal right to self-determination. Another example of anti-Semitism given by Ira is holding Jews collectively responsible for actions of the state of Israel. If you're saying that an Israeli or a Jewish person that has ties to Israel is excluded, that's a form of xenophobia. Or anti-Semitism. A recent example of this was in October of 2021, when the DC chapter of the Sunrise Movement, the environmental advocacy group, denounced Zionism and pointedly called for the removal of three Jewish groups from a voting rights coalition. The idea is even if you're tangentially involved with Israel, you are problematic. We talk about feminist issues a lot, and a lot of the time at certain spaces, like the Women's March, people who think favorably of Israel are excluded from those spaces. Sunrise DC apologized for singling out the Jewish organizations, saying they oppose anti-Semitism and that they should have instead excluded even non-Jewish groups that support Zionism. But their blanket opposition to the state of Israel is also anti-Semitic. It's perfectly fine to have strong critiques of Israel and its government. Loving your country is not supporting everything she does, but, but fighting for her to be her best self. I'm also an activist in uh, issues relating to racial equality in Israel, issues that affect Jews from diverse backgrounds like myself. You can criticize a policy, you can criticize borders, have different opinions. You, know, you can want one state, two states, how you want citizenship to apply and be available to the people living there. I can disagree with that, you can disagree with me. That's not calling for the eradication of a country. Most definitely we oppose a Jewish state in any part of Palestine. No Palestinian, rational Palestinian, not a sellout Palestinian, will ever accept a Jewish state in Palestine. The largest and most vocal movement associated with condemning Israel in its entirety, without distinction or nuance, is the BDS movement. BDS stands for Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions. And the idea is that everything and anything associated with Israel should be boycotted. The BDS movement explicitly states um, that it does not uh, recognize Israel having a right to exist as a Jewish state. That is, of course, anti-Semitic. The BDS movement is completely just modern day anti-Semitism wrapped up in a nice bow of social justice activism. We firmly reject the BDS movement, uh, which unfairly singles out Israel. I think maybe one of the most important examples in the IRA definition is the double standard. I think there are many other countries that are committing human rights violations. I mean, it would be naive to not raise an eyebrow and to say, well, why this place smaller than New Jersey when, you know, just next door are countries that are uh, literally still involved in the slave trade and throwing gays off buildings. Israel's held to that double standard because it's filled with Jews. The double standard is perhaps best seen in the Democratic Socialists of America platform, which is considered by many the foundation of progressive policy in America. But it also suffers from some serious double standard language, supporting normalization with oppressive regimes like Iran, North Korea, and Venezuela, but opposing normalization with Israel. The platform makes no mention of human rights violations in places like China, Myanmar, and Syria, but calls out Israel twice and the platform opposes the use of sanctions against any country other than Israel. And it's not just words on a website. When Democratic Socialist Jamal Bowman visited Israel recently with J Street, the liberal pro-peace process advocacy group, the Democratic Socialists of America considered expelling him. And the DSA condemned Bowman for voting to continue funding the Iron Dome missile defense system that protects Israeli cities and civilians from rockets coming from Gaza. Progressives in the House have blocked a $1 billion funding provision for Israel's Iron Dome. The overwhelming majority of Congress voted to replenish the bill to support a defense system in Israel but there were a small select group of progressive politicians who voted against it. I will not support an effort to enable and support war crimes, human rights abuses, and violence. And if you listen to its detractors, they'll call it a weapon. In reality, it's a defensive system. It's 
knocking down rockets out of the sky that are being launched at a country. Israel relies on the Iron Dome to defend her citizens against incoming rocket fire from terrorist groups like Hamas, Islamic Jihad, and Hezbollah. And it saves Palestinian lives too. What would any other country do? What would America do if rockets were being launched at it? Israel has the right to defend itself from its enemies, just like any other country does. The debate in Congress came after the conflict between Israel and Hamas in 2021. For many, that May was a turning point in the war of words against Israel and Jews. Tonight in Tel Aviv, images that change everything in an escalation that has already spiraled so fast. The cycle of bloodshed has returned. In May of 2021, the conflict between Gaza and Israel really amplified, and with that came a lot of open hostility to Zionists, often sliding into anti-Semitic territory. And I think where this landscape is starting to shift is really on social media. I would like to see my closest friends who I sat with at lunch saying that Zionism was equal to genocide on their stories. I hate your shirt. I'm gonna set it on fire. I'm serious. They would post is that Israel's an apartheid state. Israel is a racist endeavor. Essentially, hordes of people report my videos under hate speech. Uh, they've done this on videos of my cats, videos of me making bread. And then after enough reports are made, TikTok automatically removes the video. And you have to wonder if these people actually think that they're taking part in freeing Palestine by harassing Jewish activists online. I think that social media companies have a greater obligation in stopping hate that's being spread. The irony is, all of this is happening during a time when victims of hatred are finding a powerful voice, recognizing their shared oppression and shared mission, commonly known as intersectionality. While progressives have found unity in their joint fight against hatred and discrimination, many within their ranks are espousing hatred and supporting discrimination against Jews. I look for spaces that support me as a woman or as a woman of color, a person of color, an Asian person. And when those same spaces that I found safety in as one of these other parts of my identity push a one-sided narrative about Israel, they're saying that as a Jewish person, I'm not safe here and I'm not welcome here. And let's be clear, some of the people pushing this anti-Semitic anti-Zionism are Jews. Stop funding apartheid! Stop funding ethnic cleansing! Being Jewish doesn't give anyone a license to push anti-Semitic tropes or support the destruction of the Jewish state. What's important to recognize is that as much as this hatred is a political threat to Israel, it's also a threat to the very core of who we are, a threat of stigmatizing Jewish identity itself. People are hiding their Jewish identity more and more. Seeing, you know, things posted on their on their peers' Instagram stories about, you know, the Jewish state being this evil, horrible place. Of course it turns them off from wanting to be Jewish or wanting to say that they're Jewish. I definitely have friends who do not like being public about being Jewish. I have lost friends because I am a proud Jew. I shouldn't have to minimize my Jewishness for the LGBTQ plus community to accept me. So many of our generation is even scared of visiting Israel because of a fear of being judged for it. Anti-Semitism isn't new, but for our generation, we're experiencing it firsthand, almost casually, and in spaces we really want to be a part of. We're facing a critical dilemma support the causes we're passionate about, or support the culture we come from. It has really been a struggle trying to uplift myself when I watch people try to tear me down because I am a Jew who cares about my people. So a lot of times within the Jewish community, when issues of anti-Semitism come up, we're constantly tasked with setting aside the amazing things we have to celebrate about our identity, our history, our culture, and focus on anti-Semitism. We should just be allowed to be students and be young in the world and not have to 
deal with discrimination, but we live in a world where anti-Semitism is prevalent. And so I believe that being involved in Jewish organizations, in Jewish life, being part of Jewish community, having Jewish friends, definitely strengthens your commitment to your Judaism and therefore your commitment to your to your people. I'm going to care about climate change or health care or feminism. Criminal justice reform, climate change, reproductive freedom, combating racism and economic inequality. And I care about all of those things. And I'm also going to be a Zionist. I'm also going to be Jewish. I'm also going to be proud of that identity. So when I feel isolated as a Jew, or even not as a Jew, just as a human being going through this, going through this life, uh, I think one of the great comforts of my life has been the fact that I belong to the Jewish people. Because the Jewish people, we like to call ourselves the tribe. We have to think about what that concept means. What's a tribe? A tribe is an extended family. It's a space where you can feel like you're not judged, where you belong. And for all my Jewish brothers and sisters out there, you belong to the most diverse and ancient tribe in human history. That's a beautiful thing. And that's something that we can all find comfort in. So while we always might have to stand up against anti-Semitism, let's not let that hatred define us. Just because an activist group excludes, a celebrity tweets, or a professor criticizes, doesn't mean that they're right. We have to find our own answers. We can't let a hashtag, a meme, or a TikTok condemnation define what it means to be a Jew. That's our job, and that's up to us. <laughs>